Hi, welcome everyone. So today I have a very special video planned for you today. When I a couple of days ago asked on my Instagram account whether you would be interested to see a video like that, I got an overwhelmingly positive response. I believe never did I get as many people saying, yes, please make this video. And specifically today, I'm going to show you how I create a PowerPoint presentation. I will let you look over my shoulders how I use PowerPoint for myself and I will also share my thoughts thought process, why I structure pages the way I do, how I think about structuring elements on a page. So all of this will be included in this video. And yes, I will give for the opportunity to also download the sample slides in the end. There's a download link in the video description where I can sign up and then receive the file. So welcome to another coffee break here on my channel Firm Learning. My name is Heinrich. I'm a former McKinsey consultant and on my channel I want to help you to become successful in the first years of your your career. Now in the video I want to find a good balance of really showing you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it in detail but also speeding up some sections where I'm just doing things that is not that interesting. So I hope you will like it and I will also try to not use that many shortcuts to make it easier to follow. I might do a video specifically on shortcuts at some point in the future but frankly I'm not even using that many shortcuts on PowerPoint. For sure there are some that are really helpful but this will not be the focus for today. So without further ado let's get into it. So before this video, I asked myself, okay, what presentation can I not really show you? Because for obvious reasons, I cannot really guide you through an actual presentation that I did for work. So I thought, okay, let me show you a presentation that I potentially would do maybe for a sponsorship partner of this channel. So as a YouTuber, sometimes people approach me and ask me if they can do a collaboration with me. So let's imagine I'd like to pitch my channel from learning to such a partner and how such a little pitch deck could look like. And indeed, the first thing that I usually like to do is to come up with the storyline and specifically to come up with the action titles of the presentation. So the titles that we put here in the beginning. So if you have no idea what an action title is, I actually created a whole video about that. I will link it somewhere above. So have a look at that, really a fundamental concept. But let's start. And I'd say the first page is always a nice page where I introduce myself and the channel. So I could write something like this. From learning is an educational video consulting channel on social media. Its creator is Heinrich Rusche, a former MBB consultant. So this will potentially be a good first slide where I then insert the contents. And indeed I often then also like to already make some bullets what I will include. So I could for instance show my audience and also an introduction of who I am. Okay, what could be next? And here I think it's good to provide a little overview of how the content looks like that I create here on my Firm Learning YouTube channel. So here we could write something like this. All right, so this now could be a page where I indeed talk about some things uh, that I'm doing. So potentially an overview of from learning videos that I could then be showing here to this potential client of mine. Okay, next, what would could you do as the next page in such a story? And let's imagine that I already did a pilot for this client where I tested out a little campaign just to prove the value. So I could write something like this from learning pilot so this could be now a little chart where I show exactly what the value looked like that I provided and some conclusions from that. Now probably an overview of the pricing and the different contents that I could offer would be helpful. So let's create a, such an overview for a collaboration in 2020. The following packages could be offered. And then let's end with some contact information that I provide for them to be able to contact me. And again, this will now be a rather short little presentation. Of course, you will probably flesh this out a bit more if you really would create such a deck, but I trust that this will provide a little overview of how all of this looks. So let's start with the first one. Actually, let's start with the title page. And here I just inserted a more or less random stock photo that shows a boardroom setting. But let's start here with the title. So let's call it firm learning collaboration proposal. And then often here as a subtitle, you can include something like the month or the date. And then also what type of document potentially this, so for instance, discussion document. So let's now start by filling this page. So one of the most fundamental principles of slide design that will really make your life so much easier is the principle 
every page is a table. Every page or slide that you create in PowerPoint is a table. So always think about it like a table where you structure information in columns and in rows. So here indeed we have now two types of elements that we want to include here. First some information on the audience and then some information on myself, right, where I'm introducing myself as a creator. And what I like to use when I do these kind of things are always little column headers. Because indeed we could not structure this as the table where probably in the left side of the page is about the audience. So the left column, if you want to put it this way, is the audience. And then the right column, the right side of the page is the introduction. And I always like to use an element like this. I now copied it over from another document. This is pretty much just a text element and this is just a line. And then if you do this together, you can also potentially group it. I use Control and G as a little shortcut as such an element. So here let's call this audience and let's call this for the right hand side introduction. So this is now the basic structure that you want your page to take. Now the good next step is always to think about how do I now further structure these two columns, these two sides. So let's start with the audience. And here indeed we want to show what the audience of firm learning looks like, right? So how is it structured? And here a good first straightforward step might be just to show the different social media channels that I have. And again, if you remind yourself that every page is a table, now here the natural step, the natural tendency that you would want to lean to is now indeed to structure it as rows, right? If you have now different elements that you want to show within such a column, you use rows for that. So let's now start by creating rows for the different social media channels that I have. So let's start here with first YouTube. This is of course the largest channel that I use. Then next we might have Instagram. And now let me show you a little shortcut because if you press shift and control and then move an element, it creates a copy and it keeps the axis fixed, right? So it doesn't matter if you go up or down or here left and right, it keeps it fixed, it creates it on the same level, right? This is of course extremely helpful for things like that. So again, I'm copying this over, YouTube, Instagram. I have a firm learning newsletter and I have LinkedIn. I'd say these are my main channels. And again, with these things, it always simplifies your life so much if you make sure that all the elements always have the same widths, because this will help you to keep the whole page much more organized. You can now just drag it a little bit like this and I will show you later why this is so important. Now this seems to have font size 18. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's make it font size 16. Here one basic rule of slide writing is to make sure that all the text elements, all the elements in one page, with the exception being the action title and the footnote, have the same font size. Right? So let's make sure that this is the case. Okay. Now we take these four channels, we align them here to the left. I always like to use these little alignment buttons. What you can see is here that I drag the quick access bar from the top here, where it's usually here now to this lower element because this now reduces the distance from my mouse to get there and this really makes life easier for me. So what I did is now I highlighted this, highlighted this, then clicked here this align left button to make it all on the same playing field. And indeed here now another little rule of slide writing. So always what you like to do is think about the page to be like a drawing place, right? Where usually then the boundaries of the action title are the boundaries of the page. So you want to make sure for it to have proper margins that nothing goes to the left of the action title, that nothing goes beyond that. So this is pretty an imaginary little boundary. And then the same is true here to the right where usually you like to end the action title together here with the footnote and then nothing is supposed to be further right than here the demarcation that exists by the right boundary of this page. Now let's further think of how we can structure it. Indeed now let's further disaggregate this left part into two types of information. So the first is the platform. This is now what we already did here. But then we also want to include a second column and here now I did the same copying trick that I showed you with the shortcut where I talk about the firm learning audience and this is then supposed to give us the audience 
size. And here indeed on YouTube, I have 85,000 subscribers. So this is pretty much my audience that I currently have at this very moment. Now let's further style the section. So what I like to do to have the column headers in bold and black. But then if I want to focus on any other elements within the columns, I like to bold them, but then not in black. But personally, I like to use a dark blue, right? So this creates a little hierarchy among the elements because of course, black is darker than dark blue. And here, of course, you could now highlight uh, these numbers again, make sure to make them blue just to format this in a proper way. Now you could further style it by, for instance, increasing now the font size here of the number. So let's, for instance, increase it to font size 40. So this is, of course, now a little deviation from the rule that I told you that everything needs to look exactly the same in terms of font size. But of course, sometimes little deviations like this are allowed if it improves the overall look and feel, even though I would encourage you to follow this rule rather strictly for most cases. So another little thing that you can do to further improve the look and feel of this page is to include little icons for these platforms. So I did a video on this topic in the past. I will also include it somewhere above here. They are also recommended you a service that I also personally use to really draw icons because of course, if you just download them somewhere in the Google picture search, then you often have a problem with copyright. But if you use the service Simple Slides, you can have access to a large library of icons. All of them are for you copyright free. If you have the subscription, you can also use it for commercial purposes. So I can very much recommend this if you're interested to try out Simple Slides for yourself. There's a link to that in the video description as well. So in the meantime, I already selected a couple of icons that I took from Simple Slides. They also have icons for the different uh, social media platforms. So I'm just copying them in here. Of course, these look a bit weird in terms of the color here. It would also be great to have this dark blue type of look. And this is exactly what we will get us here. So let's now include them a bit. And now it's great to potentially insert them to the left of your slides. So let's move this a little bit to the right. Let's move this to the right as well. And now we have some space here where we can include these little icons. So now another little thing to further tidy all this up is to use separation lines. So this is also a very, very common element to use. And to do this, you pretty much include a line like this. I often like to format this in some light gray and then also some dashes here that you can use. Again, here, make sure that this properly starts here to the left and then also ends here to the right of this element. And then with the same trick that I showed you earlier, you can copy this over here. Now, you're, if you are this far, you can then group the different elements. You drag this to the bottom where you want to start it all. You drag this to the top where you want to let this start. Then you highlight all this potentially also here to have it evenly spaced out, align it this way, and then it's properly and evenly distributed. So let's now move here to um, the left side, so to the introduction part. So first now it would be great to also visually separate this a little bit more from the right side of the slide. So for that we can add here another line for such a separation line, then it makes sense to also make it a solid line, maybe increase the weight a little bit more. Now make sure that this nicely ends here to the right, where I showed you here to the end of the footnote. And now you can use some space to include some text about myself. So we could, for instance, call this meet the creator. So pretty much meet me as the creator of firm learning and then to further elaborate on this. So what could make sense in such a situation is to start by, for instance, including a photo. I just copied over a photo of myself, of course, to introduce myself. And then maybe here on the right, you might want to include some text. So for instance, my name with career and consulting content, something like this is what you could include. Then again, you highlight this, you make it dark blue to bold it, and then you center it or align it here. So this could be now this element, and then maybe here in some bullets below, I'd like to include 
some information about myself, also in the sense of a mini CV, a mini curriculum vitae. So just a couple of things that you could include here, right? Can move this up a little, potentially move this a little bit down. Maybe you now realize that it would be nicer to align this more to the bottom, to have it more evenly spaced out. Of course, all of this could be done now. And now it's also always a great idea to potentially bold a couple of key pieces of information that you would like to include. Okay, so this could be now a first page that you could use in such a deck. So let's now do the second page. And here what I just like to show is a very basic page where I show different examples of thumbnails of my YouTube videos just to give the impression of what my topics are all about, what my videos are like. So indeed, if you do something like this, it makes sense to also include a little header. So I will include a little header as this saying, exemplary firm learning content, selected YouTube thumbnails, right? And again, here, what I like to do is whenever I have a little extra information, I like to unbold it and then use here a little gray color to just make it look nice. But this is my personal preference. Other people might use different styles. Now let's insert a couple of pictures of thumbnails of my videos. So here we go. And indeed now, as always with these things, alignment is important. So these are now 12 pictures. So let's roughly align them in three rows with four columns each. So something like this. But now, of course, these need to be properly aligned to the boundaries. So here to the left, here to the right. Now the rows to each other. What then you can do if you do something like this is always to include, for instance, a little picture border to make it look properly. But then I'd say this really is a good proper page that you can very well use for such a purpose. Now next page. And here you remember that we wanted to show some results of a pilot that I did maybe in the past with this specific client. So the basic structure that you can follow when you work like this, when you work with numbers and create a chart, is that to the left you have a column with exactly that, so the chart, and then to the right you have a column with some implications, some conclusions that you want to make. So first what we do is that as always we include some headers for these columns. So this will now be for the chart where we say sources of new users, numbers of users indicated by client. And then to the right you potentially write something like, yeah, let's just call it conclusions, right? And now we want to include a chart. So I will now use uh, ThingCell, which is a plugin for PowerPoint. It's a plugin very widely and commonly used by consulting firms. Most large consulting firms use it, but also corporate firms use it. It's really great to create charts. But of course, you can do these things with the built-in PowerPoint chart creation tools as well. So I will now spare you the details of how exactly you need to work with ThingCell. I created here such a very, very basic ThingCell waterfall chart where we say, okay, total new clients, then what did from learning contribute as a source, what came from paid Facebook ads and what came from other channels. And here's just what I want to say is that you need to be very, very careful and rather sparse with the colors. So don't really use lots of colors. Don't make it super powerful. Usually it's good to make it, for instance, all in gray. And then I just did this in dark blue just to emphasize what was coming from my channels, what was coming from from learning. Now, next, you can continue by adding some information, some conclusions, some insights that you are drawing from all of this. So let's just, as always, copy over this text field. Let's uh, fix here the font size of font 16. And now we can insert some text. So now in order for you not needing to just watch me type a lot, I just copy here the text over with a couple of information here. And this is now indeed what we will use for this. Let's now maybe space it out a little bit better. But now here we have such a page where uh, we indeed show a chart of the results and then provide some conclusions and insights that we are drawing from that. 
let's not do this page where indeed I want to talk about the different service packages that we could offer, what these would include and then also some price tags in the end. So let's imagine that we have three different service packages that we would be willing to offer. And here again, in the table format, if you have three different elements, you can make sure to organize them in three columns. So let's just imagine we call them level one, the core package, the intermediate package, and the advanced package. So just pre-created these headers for you. So you see, these are just the very basic same headers that we were already using. And then here in the rows, what do we put here in the rows? And here one mistake that many people are doing is on such an instance, just to create a page like this, include some bullets like this, and then just create a long list of different bullets, right? So now instead of me writing something, but a long list of stuff where you detail all types of different things. This always looks very, very unstructured and not professional. This is what you call a clothesline, right? So a long clothesline list of randomly unstructured bullets. So whenever you do things like that, think about how could you structure the bullets into logical groups, into groups of elements that well fit together. And this is exactly what we want to do here. And because here now we want to describe the service package, what we are offering. Here, of course, it makes sense to then use the different social media channels that we are offering and then what we would do in each of these packages. And then maybe in the end as a last row, the pricing for all of this. So in these instances, what I like to do is to use little boxes like this. So here, for instance, we could use a light blue, then as a border, a dark blue. And now in this box, we now organize the things, right? And we now do one box for every channel. So make it Arial. I usually like to use Arial as a basic font because I believe it looks nice and clean in most cases. And now we do this for all the different channels that we introduced earlier. So YouTube, Instagram, and here just a general rule. So what you should really notice and memorize is that whenever you have now a set of elements that repeat throughout the document, and here for instance, this would be the different platforms, the different social media channels that you use, make sure that they always appear in the same order as you initially introduce them. It's always super confusing if you have a set of pages like this where you talk about the different channels and then on the one page it starts with YouTube, on the other page with Instagram and then with another one. Always keep it in the same order. This will help you to keep this organized and clean and nice to follow. Now, of course, it would in these cases also be nice to use the same icons that you used here on the page before. Now, in order for you to not see me type too much, I just now created different text boxes of bullets. Now, of course, we could also use separator lines here. So let me copy some in here as well. So let's now also make sure to include some content here in the bottom for this content editing and production part. And now what you could do is include a little arrow to make sure that this last one is really relevant for all the three packages, right? So it's the same for all these three packages that you're offering. So you could use an arrow like this, maybe make it even a little bit bolder. So now even if you make this up front, it does look a little bit weird. And here what you can do is to then include a little box that you just make white. You again properly center it here in the middle and then you do this to the end, you do this to the end as well. You align all of this and now you have such a formation which looks more or less great. So let's now align this properly as well. Here again, you can group these different row elements as always. So I think you, you learned this by now. Now it's all nicely and evenly spaced. As you can see, this does look a bit weird. So something is off here. So let's see what is causing this. And this is caused because this is here included in the group. So let's ungroup it again. Let's group it and let's align it as well to now fix it. Now, finally, though, you might want to include a line with the commercials in the very end to also indicate how expensive such a package would be to your client. So let's just take some text here. Let's align it here to the left. Let's call this commercials. And now indeed you can include 
how expensive exactly all these different packages are supposed to be. Always aligning. Aligning is the most important thing to make it look nice and clean. And now here you can insert the euro amounts. And here I will leave it to your imagination what you could charge for these packages. Again, if you have this one final alignment will not hurt. And now you're good for this page. Let's maybe move all of this up a little bit and then you are fine. Now, last but not least, let's include some contact information here. This is of course nice and straightforward. This is something that you can easily do here in the end. So here you could just do a nice page like this, not over style it. So if you create something like this, this will usually be more than fine for last page with contact information. So this is it, a very basic little document that we now jointly created as a little pitch deck for a typical influencer marketing collaboration. So for sure, this is now not yet super polished. There are several things that you could now do to further improve this. And of course, if you would really create such a deck, probably you would expand on it a little bit more. You would go into more detail of how these packages would look like. You would go into more detail of how your content looks like, of what you could do for the brand. But I hope that this gives you a good first impression. And I hope that I was successful in really guiding you through my thought process and helping you to understand how I would tackle such a task if I would need to create such a presentation. So as always, if you have any questions on this, do leave me a comment in the comment section. I will do my very best to answer every single comment that you write. Also, if you want to have the slides that we just created for yourself, I also included a link in the video description where you can download this little deck. And please, if you took any value out of this video at all, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my content. You can also follow me on Instagram. My handle is from learning. I also have an email newsletter, sign up link in the video description. And of course, also feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. Again, link to that in the video description. Now, a big thanks to all the members of Firm Learning. You're really amazing. My name is Heinrich. I'm releasing new videos every single Saturday. So looking forward to next week. Until then, good weekend to all of you. Cheers. This is Heinrich from Firm Learning.